Hey everybody, Patricia Penke here. I'm the author of the book, Stop Throwing Cash in the Trash. And I'm here today to try to get to you to understand that we are throwing in the dumpsters trash every day that is actually valuable and can be considered treasure and money in your pocket. Now I've been working on this project now for like eight years. Um, I run an estate sale business and I'm trying to control these treasures that are going to the landfills every day. Um, so I thought I'd do a series of videos. I also have a blog, Turn Trash to Cash. Um, to try and help people when it comes time to run an estate sale, garage sale, moving sale, that they understand what items are going to bring them in some cash so they can increase their profit margin. Okay, so today I would like to talk to you about a fabric called bark cloth. No, we're not going to talk about the bark cloth, the ancient bark cloth that has been around for thousands of years. Um, the original bark cloth was actually, um, it came from a tree uh, found in Asia, Africa, the Pacific, and I can't pronounce the name of the trees, but anyways, they used the inner bark, they would pound the inner bark, and uh, they would make it into sheets. A lot of work went into making uh, apparel from bark cloth. Okay, the bark cloth I'm going to talk to you about today um, basically is a soft, thick, slightly textured, bumpy cotton fabric, and it's thick. Well, I mean, for sure it's thick. So called because of its rough surface, that of tree bark. So it's not the ancient bark cloth that they had 4,000 years ago. This actually is the modern version of bark cloth. Okay, so a little bit about the modern version of bark cloth. It's woven, like I said, from cotton fibers mostly. Some of them have rayon in them. Um, and some of the textures might be a little bit different. So during the 20th century, between like late 30s and then on, I mean 1970s, I think they were, it was really popular. They used it for home furnishings, decor, to make curtains, um, drapery, upholstery, clothing, from Hawaii, Floridian, very bright colors, uh, slip covers, um, anyways, a number of things. Now they look for these pieces and they make pillows, um, they actually frame them for pictures. I mean, they have such beautiful colors and, and um, prints that, you know, they can you know, make any plain looking living room or kitchen or whatever area you want to put them in, really bring out some, um, how to accentuate that room. Okay, so some of the most popular bark cloth prints are bold floral, tropical, tiki, abstract, novelty, Atomic Age, meaning Adam, Sputnik, satellite kind of theme, amoebic, geometric, and boomerang types, again from the mid-century. Um, and I guess the, the Atomic Age, um, the way they call that, is became, basically came out of that Las Vegas Atomic City era. Okay, so we've talked about why we're going to talk about bark cloth, why it's so important. Um, and. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture here. This is just going to be, you know, from the camera here. This is a picture I found of a piece of bark cloth that only measures 22 inches by 30. Asking price $3,600. Why? You know, that's a lot of money for a little piece of fabric. Well, um, I guess it was a collaboration. It was done from a collaboration of famous artists and their works. This one is a signed piece from La Grande. I'm not sure about the pronunciation, uh, Jetty Peño Surat, which is Sunday on the La Grande Girat in 1884. So again, $3,600 for a 22 inch by 30 piece of, uh, 30 inch piece of fabric. And uh, in the Victorian time, that was big time, so. Okay, and then here's another picture. Uh, this one's Art Deco from the Art Deco, you know, Miami Beach time, uh, South Beach, when, you know, these bright colors were coming into play. So 
this one here it says uh, they came to be some of the first bar cloth pieces, the cotton pieces, came to be about 1939 during the World's Fair in New York City. So these earlier pieces, um, like this piece here is only 22 by 22 inches and uh, they want 2400 for that one. And But it's pretty cool. I mean it's a panther with palm trees. I mean that's that's pretty cool. You can make a piece of art out of that for, you know, have it framed or a pillow and that would really doll up any room. Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the pieces I have here. Okay, so here is, this is a mid-century piece that, can, that you can find them in actually like yards, unused yards, or you can find them in panels or drape, because most of the time they use these for curtains. I guess this is just a piece, this is not actually a curtain. But I wanted to try and see if you can see the nubs in that fabric, how, how the bumpy it is. Very thick, and that's how you'll know bar cloth. I paid a dollar for this piece um, at an estate sale. Okay, here we have a tropical print. I mean, look at, isn't that gorgeous? I mean, the, uh, the vibrant colors, the bold, and this has a shimmer to it. So I'm going to say that it has rayon in it to give her kind of a shimmery look. That's a nice size one. I could probably get 100 to 200 for that one, for sure. Okay, then we have another. Now this one's a little bit older. Remember, the older the better, but um, depends on the condition too. This was an old drapery piece. Then you see, you can see, you know how big and bold that is. Now, I'm going to tell you something, uh, more than likely if you find them in a home, they're going to be soiled. You can wash them in gentle cycle on your washing machine with like, you know, um, Biz or Woolite, but um, I would line dry them. I would not put them in the dryer. Um, you could do a little bit more research about that, but they could shrink and then you can press them. Okay, so this one here probably worth more this little piece here as you can see it, it I don't know if you can see that there's a farmhouse there the railroad fence stone stone bridge there and so you can kind of get an idea it's of a scene again of like kind of artwork kind of thing so this might be worth quite a bit of money it, uh, you know it's it has no si signature on it so maybe not but yet I could probably get a hundred for just that little piece. Here is another floral. This one's got, you can see the, the lines there. Like I said, you can feel it. It's thick. It's got the bump up fabric. So it's definitely not flat. You gotta remember that. It's got a little bit, it's got a texture to it. And this one here is another tropical print. So now I'm going to take the can of camera off myself for a little bit and talk to you a little bit about some of these pictures. Okay here, so the first one is an atomic, it's called Calorisket Mobiles 50s Miami Beach Bar Cloth, asking price $595. Next we have a 30s or 40s floral caladium print, eight yards, asking price, $345. Okay, the next one we have here is a tiki bark cloth print drapes. I believe they're asking $300 on there. I did, forgot to write that one down. Uh, this gal's on Etsy and I'll post her Etsy username. She's got all kinds of beautiful bark cloth for sale. Okay, this is a piece of vintage bark cloth, mid-century. It's called Tropical Egrets on Black Background. Uh, two drapery panels, 80 inches by 57 inches. They actually sold for $500 on eBay. Here is a vintage mid-century Hawaiian bark cloth jumpsuit for sale on Etsy for $125 because uh, you got to remember those bold colors played into uh, 
a lot with the, the fashion back then, back in the 50s and 60s. If you were going to Hawaii or Florida, uh, any place tropical, you could have a dress, skirt, top, um, any number of things, long dresses, moo-moos, especially the moo-moos. Uh, so that's very popular. Okay, this piece is called Candylicious. Well, you can tell why. It looks like candy. This piece is priced at $125. Last one I'd like to talk to you about is uh, this. Uh, it's called California Surfer. Three yards, selling price $695. Another thing I'd like to mention is a company called Waverly, a frame design house for textiles and wall colorings between 1923 and 2007. They called their version of the fabric Rhino Cloth probably because it was somewhat of a rough, nubby surface. And we talked about uh, how to launder it. Uh, in Hawaii, they actually call it kappa. It, it became a symbol of rank and prestige in ancient, ancient Hawaii culture, used mostly by royalty and often used for gifts. Okay, so uh, that's all I want to talk about this week. Um, here's my book, it has lots of uh, tips on how to find things that people sell for little or nothing that you can flip for large amounts of cash. So until next time, happy treasure hunting!